For over 50 years, the Boeing 737 was the best-selling aircraft in aviation history until November of 2019 when it was eclipsed by the Airbus A320 family of airplanes. However, for over half a century, the Boeing 737 was unsurpassed by any rival until the max tragedies that brought the program and Boeing to the brink of destruction. Still, I thought it would be a nice change of pace to remember what a marvel the 737 has been for over 50 years. The history of the Boeing 737 is next on Maximus. You're on a test flight aboard America's newest jetliner, the Boeing 737. I wanted to do a positive Boeing video rather than just focus on all the recent failures. As I've said many times, I've always been a Boeing fan. It's not that I go out of my way to highlight Boeing's failures, because Boeing does a very good job of highlighting them all on their own. However, while I was compiling this video about the amazing achievements of the 737 program, it became impossible not to see, at least with the benefit of hindsight, where Boeing could have avoided the eventual 737 MAX disasters. As you watch, see if you can spot these points in history where this program began to go off the rails. I'll circle back to that at the end and we'll talk about it. Early design work began on the 737 in 1964. Boeing was looking to design a 50 to 60 seat narrow body aircraft designed for trips between 50 and 1000 miles. It would be about half the size of Boeing's smallest jet, the 727. The plane would be comparable to the Douglas DC-9 and the British Airways BAC-111. While the initial design featured a T-tail like the 727 with engines mounted on the fuselage, the lead engineer made the ingenious decision to put them on the wings instead, which meant the body could be widened to six people across. As a result, the 737-100 was born. The 737 launched with the German airline Lufthansa, which ordered 21 of the planes in 1965. The first plane was delivered at the end of 1967. However, back in 1965, a few months after Lufthansa's order, United Airlines ordered 40 of the jets. However, it wanted a slightly longer version. So Boeing stretched the body a little over 6 feet and named the longer version the 737-200. In 1979, Boeing began development of the 737's first major revamp, seeking to increase both the range and the capacity of the jet. The 737-300 was announced at 1981's Farnborough Air Show and first flew in 1984. It was almost 10 feet longer than the 200 and could carry up to 149 passengers. To power the new jet, Boeing switched from the original Pratt & Whitney engines to the more powerful CFM-56 high-bypass turbofan. However, there was a problem. The 737's low ground clearance and the engine's larger diameter than on the original engine meant that the size of the fan needed to be slightly reduced. The engine had to be moved forward on the wing, and engine accessories had to be moved to the side to accommodate the 737-300's now iconic non-circular air intake. Boeing announced the even longer 737-400 in 1986. The airframe was further stretched another 10 feet and could carry up to 188 passengers. It first flew in 1988 and was entered into service later that year. The 737-500 was designed as a replacement for the 200. It carried fewer passengers, but it incorporated the improvements of the 300 and 400 to have a much longer range. It carried 140 passengers and entered service in 1990. While the 737-100 and 200 remained the original models, the 300, 400, and 500 would eventually come to be known as the 737 Classic Series. In 1991, Boeing began working on another update to the plane. The next generation, or the 737 NG series, which was prompted by European airplane maker Airbus's introduction of its A320 narrowbody family, which went on to rival the 737's dominance of the market. Although the performance of the 737 NG meant it was essentially a whole new aircraft family compared to the Classic, it kept important commonality with the Classic that upgrading or operating mixed fleets would be easier and more cost-effective for customers. 
The airframe received upgrades, the wing was redesigned, and the flight deck and cabin were improved. The 737-700 was the first of the NG series to launch, and first flew in February of 1997. The plane could carry up to 149 passengers and had a longer range than previous models. The 189-seat 737-800 came next, first flying in July of 1997. The smallest of the variants, the 132-seat 737-600, had its first flight in January of 1998. The longest version, the 189-seat 737-900, first flew in 2000. An updated version of the 7300-900ER for extended range could carry as many as 220 people, and it first entered service in 2007. Boeing began to discuss a successor for the 737 as early as 2006. Looking at two options, putting new, more efficient engines on an existing 737 airframe, or starting from scratch with a brand new airframe. Boeing heard rumblings that Airbus was similarly exploring an A320 replacement. However, both companies were still in the early stages of development. Boeing was still trying to make up its mind in 2010 when Airbus launched the A320neo family. NEO standing for new engine option. The jets used the original A319, 320, and 321 airframes, but used new engines that offered a 15 to 20 percent increase in fuel efficiency, consequently lowering operating costs and giving the planes longer ranges. Airbus has since released two long-range variants of the NEO family, the A321LR and the A321XLR. In July of 2011, to much fanfare and with a major press release, American Airlines announced the largest aircraft order in history up till that point. American was ordering 460 single-aisle, narrow-body aircraft. American would be the first U.S. airline to take delivery of the new Airbus Neo option. They ordered 130 standard A320s and 130 of the A320neo jets, with an option for 365 more. American also said that it would order 100 of Boeing's imaginary next-generation 737s that eventually went on to become the MAX. What American didn't know is that Boeing didn't actually have a new plane at all. They put on a smoke and mirrors act just to secure American's order. Until this order, American Airlines had exclusively purchased from Boeing for more than a decade. Having convinced American to order 100 new planes, Boeing now had to manufacture another next-generation re-engined 737 to offer as an A320neo alternative. In August of 2011, Boeing announced a 737 MAX family consisting of four differently sized models, the 737 MAX 7, 8, 9, and 10. The 737 MAX kept commonality with the 737NG but used new CFM International Leap X engines, offering improved fuel efficiency. The new engines, though, were once again moved forward and higher up on the wings, which meant the plane would handle differently. The first MAX flight took place in January of 2016. The FAA certified the plane in March of 2017. The first plane was delivered in May of 2017. Within a year, 130 of the MAX planes had been delivered, logging more than 118,000 flight hours. However, unknown by its customers, during development, Boeing realized that the placement of the new engines on the MAX could cause the nose of the plane to pitch upward in some situations, like low-speed flight or flight with high angle of attack when the plane is being flown manually. To compensate for that, Boeing designed an automated software called the Maneuvering Control Augmentation System, or the now infamous MCAS, which would automatically activate to stabilize the pitch and nudge the aircraft's nose back down so that it feels and flies like other 737s. And that brings us to today. Unless you were recently born or arrived here from another planet, you know the rest of the story. In October 2018 and March of 2019, the Boeing MCAS system led to two disastrous crashes that claimed the lives of 346 people and possibly the entire Boeing Corporation's future along with it. As you can see, Boeing had a history on the 737 project of going back to the well one too many times. In 1984, they saw the first real modification. They stretched the 737 10 feet longer and added new engines for the first time. However, to accommodate the plane's outdated low stance, they had to rig the new engines to fit. They moved them forward like the MAX. 
They had to move the internal engine components to make it work. They even needed to have the engine manufacturer resize the fan blades of the CFM engine to fit the 737's oddly uncircular shape along with the cowling so that the engines wouldn't practically drag on the ground. You would think that Boeing would have drawn the line here by creating oblong fan blades for your plane because it sits so low to the ground based on 1960s airport design technology. Then in 1991, this is where I think Boeing made the fatal decision that would come back to haunt them. Some say it was with the creation of the MAX that doomed them, but I say it was the creation of the NG in 1991. I'll explain. Boeing wasn't stupid. They didn't get to where they were by being naive. They knew Airbus was looking toward the future. Boeing just chose not to believe it rather than to be proactive and create a replacement for the outdated 737. Do not misunderstand me. The NG was a fantastic plane. The wing was redesigned, the flight deck was upgraded with modern avionics and passenger cabin improvements similar to those on Boeing's 777, including more curved surfaces and larger overhead bins than on previous generations of the 737. The problem is that it was at this moment in history that Boeing knew Airbus was planning for more to come in the future. Boeing chose to stick with, at this time, a 30-year-old aircraft when the Airbus A320 was a mere four years old. Once again, with the MAX in the mid-2000s, we would see history repeat itself one last time. Boeing returned to the well one too many times, and the rest, as they say, is history. We've heard it too many times before that Boeing was blindsided by Airbus in 2010 with their A320neo. I don't believe that, but if Boeing really was surprised by Airbus, then they should have just took the L and moved on. Well, that's all I have right now. That's what I think. How about you? Please leave comments down below. Remember to like, share, and of course, subscribe. And until next time, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the year. Yeah, is Maximus.